Welcome to Hair 101, a podcast where you'll learn all you need to know about hair, color, science, and of course, the importance of the client experience. Whether you're an experienced stylist, just starting out, or have a curious mind and want to know more about your hair, this podcast is for you. I'm Nicole Manzer, salon owner, master stylist, and your host. I'm so grateful to share 20 years of my most valuable and timeless insights with you. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Hair 101 with myself, Nicole Manzer. I'm so happy you could join me again today. Um, So today we're diving in with the characteristics of the hair. So essentially we're looking at why is it important? Why do we need to know it? and what are they, and really getting into the definition and a little bit more of a focus on the relationship of them to hair color, and I'll touch base with cutting as well. So as a hairstylist, I use these in my chair every single day with every single client. It helps me determine whether I'm going to use thinning shears, texturizing shears, my just my plain sharp shears, a razor to the hair, what type of haircut I'm going to give them, whether I'm going to do more layers, whether it's going to be a bit of an undercut. And then when it comes to color, this is really, really important after formulating because it helps me pick the developer. It helps me understand how their hair is going to lift and really helps take the guesswork out of formulation um, and gives you a nice base and a nice foundation to kind of start with. So the five characteristics of the hair is texture, porosity, tenacity, density, and elasticity. So we're going to kind of dive in deep with those five topics today. So we'll start with the first topic, which is texture. So the definition of texture is the size or the diameter of the hair shaft. Now that just means that whether it's if you have thick hair, if you have thin hair, if you kind of look at it in your hand, can you really feel it? Or does it just kind of like, yeah, it's there. So that that gives us a sense of what their thick and thinness of the hair So texture is comprised of three categories, which is essentially fine, medium, or coarse hair. Now, how this applies to hair color is that fine hair accepts color and it lightens much quicker than coarse hair. And coarse hair is generally more resistant to color surfaces. So what does that mean? When you look at a hair shaft under a microscope, what you'll be able to see is the cuticle cortex, which is what we were talking about in the last podcast. Now with fine hair having a smaller cortex or room, there's not as much pigment within the hair. And so it's that pigment that's in the hair. Essentially, you don't have to lighten it or you don't have as many to lighten. So it's going to accept it quicker. It's going to lighten a lot more quicker within the hair because you don't have as many. Where when you have a coarse hair, it's a fatter or a bigger strand. So you're going to have that much more pigments within the hair. So if you're doubling or tripling the amount of pigments that you have to play with, you're also going to have to really take your time with that color. It's not going to want to lighten as quickly as before. And so when it comes to texture with the hair and with cutting, personally, I find that when I'm cutting somebody with really, really fine hair, I don't want to use thinning shears or texturizer shears because that's just going to create gaps that the hair is just going to sit into itself even more. I prefer actually to use the razor properly but I prefer to use the razor on the ends of the hair because it's going to give me a little bit more of a edgy look. It's going to help blend in any kind of harsh lines that potentially could be found within the hair because fine hair is actually really difficult to cut because it really shows every single chop mark in the hair. And coarse hair, you can go in there with the thinning shears. It can be a little bit more forgiving when you are cutting the hair. So now we're going to move on to porosity. The definition of porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb and hold moisture and liquid. 
So when I'm thinking porosity, I'm always thinking of a sponge. A sponge is very, very porous. Something like a rock is not porous whatsoever. Although I'm sure some geologists will disagree with me. But essentially, porosity is how much liquid the hair holds within the hair itself. How this really focuses on hair color, not so much the cutting, but the hair color is basically porous hair is easier to lighten. And it often is accepts hair color faster. It may also release hair color faster as well. So that's something really important to pay attention to. Porous hair accepts coolness and rejects warmth. Non-porous hair is more difficult to lighten and therefore has the tendency to resist the color process. A rule of thumb is that the hair is more porous on the mid-shaft and ends and less porous near the scalp. What does porous feel like? To me, when I have hair in my chair that's really, really porous, it almost feels like cotton that's been sitting in water. It's almost soft, sometimes a little bit slimy, and it just grips onto the water like there's no tomorrow. So why would porous hair accept coolness and reject warmth is because we need that blue pigment in the hair. If we were to put a toner or something on the hair itself, that hair is going to grab all of the blue color, even if it was a neutral toner. And that yellows or a little bit of the oranges that we need in the hair, it's just, they're just going to fall out right away. So it's going to grab onto the blue pigments. Now, when we get into the pigment um, portion of our podcast, you'll understand that the blue pigment is a bigger pigment. It's easier for the hair to grab onto where the red pigment is actually can be a little bit tricky for the hair to grab onto. When I'm looking at hair and I'm looking at the texture and I'm looking at the porosity of the hair and I'm trying to figure out what am I doing with hair color, if the hair is really, really porous... I know that it's either not going to accept any of the color that I want to put in there or it's going to go very, very ashy. So I need to be mindful about what color I'm actually putting in there. So it is a really important one. The next one is tenacity. So the definition of tenacity is the degree of difficulty in which the cuticle can be penetrated. So what this means is that if the cuticle is really, really stuck to the hair shaft itself, it's not going to color because you can't lift it up. Good example of tenacious hair can be gray hair. It can be extremely tenacious. It can be, we like to call it stubborn, but it just doesn't color. So what you need to do sometimes is increase the amount of ammonia that you're putting in the hair or putting in the hair color in order to lift that cuticle up a little bit more from the hair. Another example of tenacious hair is typically Asian hair. It's beautiful. It's got the shine to it that you can see from a mile away. But if you were to ever try and perm very straight Asian hair, it can be extremely difficult because that cuticle is lying so flat along the hair shaft. And that's what's going to give it its shine. But trying to lift that sucker up can be really, really difficult. So with tenacity and the relationship to hair color. So the hair that's very tenacious is more difficult to color. This type of hair is also referred to as resistant. Always use maximum processing time when it comes to tenacious hair. Now, really the only best indication that we're going to see from tenacity is if the hair is really, really shiny. Typically, if the hair is a virgin hair, it hasn't been colored or had any chemical services to it. So those are good indications, or you're going to know pretty quickly after the first time you color their hair. So the next one is density. So the definition of density is the quantity or the number of hairs per square inch on the scalp. So really, the easiest way to look at this is just get a small square inch of hair. And can you see scalp? Can you not see scalp? When you touch it, is there a lot of hair there? Or is there kind of a bit of breathing room? So how this relates to hair color is the denser the hair, the more hair color product is necessary for proper coverage. The smaller parting should be taken. In addition, dense hair can often trap heat at the scalp area 
during the hair color process. So this can what we call hot roots. This is where the roots take on a level higher and then the ends are a little bit lower. It's because the hair is so dense that the hair color, it's like putting a cap on that area. The hair color will just kind of grab, go in there and grab it and <laughs> you're going to get hot roots. It's not a pretty thing if you haven't seen them. And so to avoid a brighter or lighter scalp area, make sure the hair is not pressed against the scalp while processing. So what I find works well is when I'm coloring the hair, I go one way when I'm actually applying a solid color, and then I'll go through with the sectioning part of my color brush, and I go the opposite way, and I just try and lift the hair and aerate it just so it has room to breathe. It has room for the oxygen to get at the hair, because we do actually need oxygen to help us color the hair as well. So number five, and the last one we'll touch on today, is elasticity. So the definition of elasticity is the ability of the hair to stretch and return to, to its normal state. Essentially, when the hair is wet, we want the hair to be able to stretch out about 50% of the size that it was before, and then return back to where it was. When it's dry, we only want it to go about 25%. So if the hair snaps, or if it doesn't return, then we have an elasticity problem. So if the hair does not return to its natural state or breaks off during a test, please don't color it. It's not in the optimal condition and the hair should not be color treated. I would recommend doing a treatment or um, a hair repair system, send them home with product and really just say, you know, your hair health is important to me and I don't feel like giving you a chemical haircut today. So let's work on getting your hair to a good place that we can color it and come back in a few weeks and we'll happily get you to X, Y, Z. I like to under promise and then give them, try and give them what they want. I'm always very honest and I'm always very realistic when it comes to doing color within the hair. I think that's a very important trait for all hair hairdressers to have. I, when you're first starting out, all you want to say is yes, yes, yes. But sometimes you have to listen to your gut and listen to your instinct and you have to say no. And if you can stand by the reasoning and if you can stand by why you're saying no and justify it, as a salon owner, I will stand by you. It to me is such an important thing because that's your integrity. That is who you are. And they will go somewhere else if they're not happy with their no. And they will go to that person that will do it. And what you said will happen. And they will come back to you and be your client for life because you are honest with them. And honesty is such an important trait in a hairdresser because it builds trust. And when you have good trust, it's going to build loyalty. And at the end of the day, it's your loyal clients who trust you and know that you're being 100% honest with you are the ones that you want to have in your chair. It's about building relationships. So those are the five characteristics of the hair. I hope you guys learned something today and I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of my expertise. Thanks so much for taking the time to learn something new today. I hope you apply this knowledge and keep developing your craft. If you enjoyed this episode, please tell your friends and colleagues about us to help us grow and spread the knowledge. You can also leave us a great review. Get in touch with me at Nicole dot manzer on instagram with any topic suggestions i'd love to hear your classic industry insights and share them on future episodes so please contact me with your tips to make sure you include your name where you're writing from all the links you need are in the show notes below subscribe on your favorite podcast listening app and tune in next time let your inner beauty shine